Good morning to all. Our presentation is divided into two parts. First, brief section about the problems of our city like any other city is facing because of rapid urbanization. And second, solutions that our city is going to implement. Growing urbanization has its own share of multiple problems. Overcrowding, slum settlements, water and sewage problems, transport problems, a huge climate impact because of urban pollution. We all need a resolve to change. Actually, we need to identify the problems of our urban city. And to do that, one can assess by using various indicators. These indicators help in judging how a city is currently performing. For example, energy consumption, cycling, uh, recycling rate, etc. And also to assess the city's environmental aspirations or emissions. These indicators are for air quality, water quality, waste and land use, transport facilities, building related parameters, energy conservation, CO2 emission, environmental governance. Idea behind such evaluation is to ensure a green and sustainable city. And what is a green city? It is a community where there is a perfect balance of its environmental, ecological and social needs. Such a city is necessary, not uh, only for all members of society, but for generations to come. This, of course, cannot be achieved without joint efforts of all stakeholders. Becoming a green and sustainable city is more complicated than just good urban planning. Project Gruen is precisely what is the need of the art. We all know what Gruen is. It is an environment or a city which practices sustainability and urban innovation to provide a healthy and clean environment to its inhabitants. Let me introduce our dream city, Paradise. Our city, Paradise, is a Gruen which believes in the power of people and democracy. It has a government with the political will needed to follow the principles of sustainability. It is a city which has resolved to provide a cleaner, greener and healthier environment to its citizens. We, Paradisians, are committed to do our share in making our planet a better place to live. We at Paradise have a democratic government that is elected after every five years. Elected members are known as council members. Its leader is called the mayor. Council members Council members form different committees which deliberate on important issues for good ensuring um, effective and a positive governance. Paradise give its citizens right to be heard. Their complaints are overviewed by the city council because at Paradise we firmly believe that what is needed is not only to attain victory for democracy, it is to retain democracy. We at Paradis have made policies for ensuring an effective, transparent and accountable government. But we understand that policy implementation is much more important than policy itself. We have gone paperless completely. E-governance is the new way of life in our city. Motive behind is to ensure that we have a city where resources, be it time, money, people are not wasted and complete cooperative, synchronized, integrated and transparent actions are taken with the help of the tools of IT sector. Many landmark policy decisions have been taken by Council of Paradise, which I'm going to discuss in next few slides. Number one is energy generation in Paradise. Paradise uses multiple types of energy resources for itself. At present, hydropower and nuclear power are two main sources. These are generated elsewhere at big plants in the country and then distributed through national grid. This means a huge loss during transmission and distribution. This, of course, means loss of resources. Solar energy generation in Paradise. In our area, 9 out of 12 months are solar energy rich period. Now, city is working big time on creating novel solar panels. What are these panels? These are dye sensitive PV coatings on building cladding to generate electricity. It is like dressing the building. This looks cool and advantage is that surfaces do not need to point at the sun to be efficient and the panels don't take up land space. It also provides thermal insulation and noise reduction. 
City is planning to work big time in converting every house, every factory and every mall to be self-sufficient by generating regular supply of solar energy. Every building will, will become self-reliant and also contribute extra energy for distribution elsewhere in the city through our own city grid. This environmental friendly, no maintenance, re renewable energy source is helpful in cutting down electricity bill because the electricity usage from uh, generated from the sun is free. Next is the buildings and architecture. We have realized that a third of all greenhouse gas emissions are accounted by buildings. Council Committee on Building Architecture and Design is taking a closer look on buildings in our city. Now, how to design and build an energy efficient building? Idea is to significantly reduce the energy need for heating and cooling. This can be achieved through bioclimatic architecture, high performance controlled ventilation and high performing building envelope. One such idea is of solar cladding, which we have already discussed. Then comes the public transportation in Paradise. Now, our city has provided a vision of future transportation, that is the caterpillar train or the sea trains. You may ask why the sea trains? Rather than riding rails attached to the ground level, the train car travels on an arch-shaped structure that carries passengers high above the street, leaving plenty of space for cars, trucks and standard level buses. Unlike typical rail transit, the sea train's thin arches wouldn't block out the urban scenery, which is another added benefit. We assume that a network of sea trains will help reduce emissions and save the time spent in traffic as well. Now, something about private transportation in our city. Every vehicle has to meet air pollution standards for nitrous oxide and CO2 emission. We have completely banned diesel vehicles in our city. Most of the vehicles now are hybrid vehicles with an electric motor and a rechargeable battery. Hybrids have helped in reducing auto emissions by 90% or more. Hybrids are of two types, regular and plug-in ones. A plug-in hybrid is plugged into an electricity source to make sure that the battery is charged. Plug-in hybrids run for a longer time on electricity and so are less polluting than regular hybrids. Plug-in hybrids are a more sustainable option. Paradisians recognize that air pollution is a problem that plagues a lot of cities. It is indeed a problem that requires immediate consideration and action. First major causes of air pollution is industrial air pollution. It is the leading cause of air pollution. Our city planners have ensured that all the industrial units generating air pollutants are to be established outside the the limits of the city. Even those which are outside the city need to put exhaust streams in power plants and industrial plants in order to remove pollutants before they enter the atmosphere. This way the particulates are filtered out and sulfur and nitric oxides are broken down by catalysts. By removing these oxides we reduce the pollutants that cause the, air, which, uh, that cause the acid rain. Second most common cause of air pollution has been vehicular emissions. Paradise, Paradise Council Committee on Pollution Control has decided to completely ban diesel vehicles, ensure that any vehicle can only be registered by transport department if it is fitted with catalytic converters. This exhaust emission control device helps in reduction of emission. These catalysts break down nitrous oxide, carbon monoxide and VOCs. Another important decision taken by our council is waste management in Paradise. No city can keep generating huge amount of solid waste and keep, think of successfully dumping it as well. City pollution, both water as well as air pollution, cannot be scaled without proper waste management strategies. For this reason, Paradise follows the principle of three R's. Reduce. Uh, we all know that policy implementation we all know that policy of reducing waste is the first step in the waste hierarchy. If there will be less waste production, we'll need to manage less waste. Uh, for this, citizens will be encouraged to reduce their consumption, which will reduce their waste production. And every citizen has taken a pledge to generate less waste by using cloth pack for groceries, buying only that much which is essential, 
the idea is to buy less, uh, reducing consumption, reusing plastic and glass packages, carrying their own water bottles, using less and less paper. Equally important has been training everyone about the color coding of waste containers so that everyone uses the right waste container. Single-use disposable products like plastic cutlery, straw, tissues, unnecessary packaging, etc. are already prohibited in our city and reusable alternators are being promoted. Reuse is the second R in the uh, waste hierarchy. Nothing is ever truly useless. Reusing. Recycling is the process of converting uh, waste material into new material and objects. Materials which can be recycled are called recyclable materials. For example, metals, glass and plastics to a certain extent. Recycling plants will ensure that all uh, recycled waste is recycled and citizens are being encouraged to re use recycled commodities. These three R's of waste management hierarchy is the best way to control day by day increasing solid waste in the environment. Our mayor has given the city a motto of zero waste production by the year 2030. All waste can be useful in some way or the other. What you don't require anymore might be all someone needs. Give what you don't require and take what you need. The citizens of Paradise will be encouraged to reuse old things or donate them so that, so that, uh, so that they can come in use of someone who needs them more. We have erected a wall of kindness where you can leave what you no longer need and take what you require. Biodegradable waste, which cannot be recycled, is sent out to the biomass management sector and is used in making compost, vermicompost, etc. Another is now wastewater treatment. There are two stages of wastewater treatment. Number one, physical water treatment to remove solid impurities. And number two, chemical water treatment to remove harmful microbes and make water fit for drinking. The future of a nation largely depends on the health of its people, particularly the young generation. Millions of people worldwide die because of unavailability, inaccessibility or unaffordability of food. Production, storage and distribution of food poses challenges of its own. At Parities, we utilize various novel yet simple methods to curb these issues. Because Paradisians believe that no one should go hungry to bed. A balanced diet is necessary for the optimum development of the body and the mind. We, to ensure that emissions from food consumption are kept low, we encourage locally produced food, which help people grow low-cost and organic food by themselves. Rooftop gardens are to ensure that ample is produced for daily needs. And also, um, just a second. Uh, community supported agriculture and farmer markets is encouraged since it cut down the cost and emissions. Plant based food is encouraged since it produces less emissions and farmer markets are a great way to lower the cost for consumers and increase the producers profits. Data over uh, data world over tells us that we waste as much as half of all the food we produce. Not only this reduces the food available for everyone, but also the emissions released in producing the food result in nothing but waste. At Paradise, restaurants and grocery stores donate any leftover edible food to the food banks. These banks distribute it among those who need it. The vision behind Paradise is that a sustainable world is not a utopia. Sustainability does not have to come in the form of futuristic, unattainable technology, but rather technology and ideas that are simple yet bring remarkable change to our societies. Our city is a very much achievable, feasible and most desirable goal for generations to come. The contributors of this project and presentation are Naira Kakkar, researcher, Sanskriti Arya, researcher and backup presenter, and myself, Prashasti Tyagi, researcher and backup presenter. Thank you so much.